If you're watching this, then that means that the Lakers are officially out of playing contention and have concluded one of the most underwhelming seasons in NBA history. Sure, there were injuries and a consequent lack of chemistry would hurt any team, but the talents and expectations of this team still make the 22 Lakers a massive failure. In this video, we'll discuss what went wrong for the Lakers this season and if there's any way in hell that they can fix this moving forward. Before we begin, leave a like on the video to support the channel and sub for more content like this. Without further ado, let's get into it. The worst kept secret in the entire league is that the Russell Westbrook trade was a massive failure. In retrospect, this isn't some revelation as many people were quick to call out the awkwardness of the fit before the trade was even official. Westbrook obviously operates well when he can run the show at point guard and be the driving force for his respective team. The problem is, LeBron already operates at an elite level with the ball and is still one of the best in the business at being a playmaker. Heck, two seasons ago when the Lakers won the title, he was quite literally the de facto point guard of the team. In summary, LeBron already did what Russ would provide to the team at a higher level than Russ. But somehow, the Lakers didn't deem this to be redundant. And yeah, people would allude to the Lakers needing another playmaker or go-to option when LeBron sits, and even looked at the Russ acquisition as an avenue for LeBron to sit out games. But even then, the first problem is an overblown argument that people tend to die on, and the Lakers haven't been the greatest team in the world when LeBron sits. To Russ's credit, playing in the majority of the games and him giving us all every single night is commendable. Not only that, every LeBron-led team is worse when he sits. However, it's evident that the redundancies and skill sets between LeBron and Russ, as well as Russ's lackluster ability off the ball, all show that Russ wasn't worth the depth that the Lakers had to give up in that trade. In Russ, the Lakers got a floor raiser when they needed a ceiling raiser, and now they paid the price for it. Now, Russ has a player option of $47 million next season, in which he has 47 million reasons to pick up. And as I'll get to a little bit later, that's almost impossible to trade. But before we move off of Westbrook, I need to debunk some lies that have been spread around about this trade. More specifically, this fabled idea that the Lakers could have gotten DeRozan and Buddy Heald instead of Russell Westbrook. Since it is the Lakers, people will just take anyone's word on anything and run it just for clicks. However, you'll know the real reality of the situation right now. So, listen closely. There is no scenario where the Lakers could have gotten both Heald and DeRozan. For one, if the Lakers signed and traded for DeRozan, which they definitely had to do given a lack of cap space, the Lakers would have been hard capped. Meaning, they couldn't have re-signed Caruso, even with his bird rights, they would have no cap exceptions, and in a sign and trade for DeRozan, where they'd have to give up the salaries of Kuzma and KCP, they couldn't have traded for Heald as well. Even in a scenario where the Lakers just signed and traded for DeRozan, who we can agree is better than Westbrook, the team would still be extremely top heavy and have limitations that would keep them out of title contention. At the end of the day, I don't know why Magic would go on national TV and blatantly lie about the situation that he wasn't even that knowledgeable about. But hey, I can see why he was a bad GM. Next, we obviously have to talk about Anthony Davis and the scary reality of his trade to LA. The workings of the deal itself date back to the trade deadline of 2019, and even though the deal fell through then, it was a formality that it would happen in the offseason. AD at the time was universally considered a top 10 player in the league, and just the season prior, finished third in MVP voting. The package that the Lakers gave up was substantial, I'm not going to talk about the young core in detail since I already did that in a previous video. But at the time, the deal made sense. LeBron was 35 and keeping that young core didn't bode well for immediate success. At that trade, the Lakers have won one title, which was obviously the main goal of the trade in the first place. However, the trade was never supposed to be this short-sighted. 
Anthony Davis was only 26, and as good as he was at that age, the hope for the Lakers is that the Lakers would grow into his team as LeBron aged. But in reality, AD has not only regressed as a player, but at 37 years old, LeBron is still far and wide the best player on this team. Additionally, the fact that AD missed half the season in back-to-back -back years is very concerning. AD obviously isn't intentionally injuring himself, and I definitely feel for him due to this unfortunate circumstance. But, the fact of the matter is that the Lakers gave up a grand package in order for AD to be their franchise player. A package that also gives the Pelicans the Lakers lottery pick this season and onward. If AD's availability is going to be a huge question mark moving forward, then the Lakers simply don't have a long-term future and have to evaluate what to do with AD moving forward. Sure, LeBron is 37 and still is somehow going strong, but the franchise shouldn't be heavily reliant on him given that he's inevitably going to decline and with him being able to leave in the summer of 2023. Before we get into the Lakers' limited offseason options, this video wouldn't be complete without addressing Frank Vogel. It's fair to say that Vogel has been at the forefront of blame for the Lakers this season, and it's easy to see why the Lakers might let go of him by season's end. Frank Vogel is a defensive coach with a huge lack of offensive creativity, a circumstance that was definitely doomed for failure. Finding a way for Russ, Braun, and AD to work together would have been difficult for any coach, but the lack of any real offensive creativity from Vogel didn't help. His terrible rotations didn't help either, with her being inexplicable lineups where there's literally no offense. Additionally, Vogel is a defensive coach as mentioned before, which is a strong asset to have if you have the personnel, but dreadful if you don't. Just as we saw all season, as the Lakers dropped from the first offensive rating in 2021 to 21st in 2022. So, with all that being said, what can the Lakers realistically do this offseason? They don't have the lottery pick or even a second round pick, Russ more than likely is going to pick up his player option, and the team is flooded with one-year deals that will come off the books. With no cap flexibility and limited draft capital, where do the Lakers go from here? Russ's $47 million player option isn't something that teams will be thrilled to take on, so you will have to dangle those 2026 and 2028 first rounders to get Russ out of here. Even in that process, you're going to receive salary that you don't necessarily like. And even with Russ off the roster, the roster will just be LeBron, AD, THT, Stanley Johnson, Kendrick Nunn if he picks up his player option, Austin Reeves, and whatever bad contracts you got in exchange for the Westbrook deal. With no spending power, the Lakers will have to settle for more past their prime vets who hopefully feel that the Lakers can be a competitive team. If AD and LeBron are healthy and the team can get solid support pieces at the minimum, the Lakers can still be a solid team next season, especially if the Jazz let go of Quinn Schneider and the Lakers can swoop him up. If you didn't know, Quinn Schneider is familiar with the franchise, given that he was a Lakers assistant in the 2012 season. However, pertaining to on-court matters, the help of AD and LeBron being in question will always keep the Lakers in jeopardy as well. No longer is LeBron an alien that can just rearrange his bones and be fit enough to play the next game. At this point, he might miss double-digit games each season. And for AD, even though we obviously aren't hoping for injuries, no one would be shocked if he missed 40-plus games next season. Because of that, the Lakers should definitely take a hard look at the current situation and consider every possible solution, even if it involves dealing one or both of its two best players. But hey, those are just my thoughts. If you were the Lakers, what would you do this offseason? And if you were to go to the extreme, would you trade LeBron and or Anthony Davis? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like. Hope to see you all in the next one and stay tuned.